Cheers, hi guys, good evening. Um, <coughs> yeah, um, so just a bit of background on me first. Um, I'm uh, part of the Product Works team uh, here in Dublin. It's um, three of us, uh, we're just a small business, um, started up there over the last year. And uh, you can find us on Twitter, etc. Um, if you want to check us out. Um, so basically what we do is we just take uh, people's ideas and build them into products. Um, could be any kind of size of product. Um, we're currently working on a banking solution at the moment, and most recently uh, we finished up um, this MVP for classical music streaming. Um, so, just tell you a little bit about that. Um, so, they're called Gramify. Um, so, these guys, they have, most of them are PhD students, and a lot of them have a big interest in classical music. So, just taken from their own words, like some of the big problems with classical music is that it's difficult to uh, classify. Um, so their idea is that like classical music is, is made up of you know multiple pieces, like Beethoven, for example, uh, was a composer and he wrote a piece. And uh, that piece is made up of a number of different movements. And over the years, like since he wrote that piece, there would have been many different recordings of that. Um, so the big problem there is when you do a search for a particular type of recording, it's usually not available, or you do a search for this and something else comes up, so that's a big problem. Um, so their way of solving that is to have this idea of a curated playlist. Um, so that's, they're doing like a thing where it's this MVP is once once a week, there's, there's a particular curated playlist with a list of recordings that you can listen to. Um, so, yeah, so I won't be talking too much about that part of it, but I'll be driving into the tech part. Um, so, uh, moving on, just in general, so the app structure we went for, we decided to go for Ember.js, so the thing they wanted was a single page app. Um, the guys, some of the tech guys, the founder tech guys, uh, were talking about using Angular, but I was like, no, <laughs> use Ember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so um, in general, I won't be talking too much about the Ember part. It's more about the uh, HTML5 audio, but in general, like we're using, you know, all the good conventions that Ember has. Um, the app has about two or three different pages, so two or three different resources. And uh, built a full player component using the Ember component structures. A um, little bit of a shout out to the uh, Ember component inbound actions. I think Gavin Joyce was the author of that, and I think even Pat, Pat has done some stuff on that as well. That, that really helped me with uh, having some application-wide uh, events. Um, so after some after some like uh, searching and googling, I decided to go for no third-party libraries. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so for the browser audio options. Um, there's really only two things that are out there at the moment. There's a, an audio context API. Uh, so I'm not going to go through. I'm not going to go through the docs in detail uh, for each, but there's a link to each of them if you guys would like to take a look. Um, so there's the audio context API and the audio element, which is uh, just a HTML tag. Um, so looking at the audio, audio context API first, um, there's just a few particular parts that are of interest. So there's a destination, which is usually always the um, this, where the music goes to, which is just usually the browsers uh, or the computer speakers. Uh, we have a source, which we create um, using the create buffer source uh, function. And we pass it some um, music data to play from. And uh, we have to connect that up. And we just start it and stop it. That's that's the basics of the Audio Context API there. Um, so like any good programmer, when I first started off with this, I did some Googling. Um, so some of the good stuff I came across was there was a library called Polymer, which is one of Google's things. Um, that allows you to define very uh, HTML component-esque uh, type stuff. Um, so it also has some built-in um, APIs for the audio and the video. Um, APIs in the browser. Uh, I also came across this one called Howler.js, which is good as well. I can show you a few demos actually of that. Um, this is more based on, I think this one, more for games in in the browser. So you can find sounds and you can play them. 
Turn this, turn this up. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no sound. Cool. Okay, we'll move on. Anyway, there's demos there you can check. Um, so, but in the end, anyway, like, I, I had integrated Howler.js and I kind of found it difficult to then modify that to take like some of the uh, attributes out and like dealing with the progress bar, for example, uh, seeking, dragging the uh, progress uh, to jump to a certain part of a song and so on. Um, so in the end, um, basically just this, went to this JS bin here, uh, which is a really, really simple um, example of uh, using the other context API, it literally just loads in some music, plays it, and it has a progress bar, play and pause, and so on. Um, so that was kind of the basis for what we used. Um, so I'll just talk a little bit about um, how how you would set that up. Uh, so the first part of doing it would be to fetch something. So you just have to set up some XHR and um, you would specify your URL to get from, so let's say we were loading gang style, <laughs> the dog. Uh, the response type is going to be an array buffer, uh, which is just a type you need that uh, to specify. Um, so once that's loaded, we just call it decode function. Uh, so moving on to decode function, you get the array buffer from the return, and uh, the audio context API has a decode audio data function, which you pass, and from that you'll get an audio buffer. And uh, so I just store that and I'm going to use it now in a moment. Um, so then there, we have to connect stuff up. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, you just you create a buffer source, uh, set the set the buffer from pr the the previous data you got from the XHR into the source, and then connect it up to the uh, computer speakers. Um, so then to to play from there, you just do source that start uh, at a particular position and uh, it's stop it. it's uh, source that stop uh, zero for some reason <laughs> uh, seeking is pretty simple as well. I just do source that start at a position plus you know if someone dragged fifty pixels across like that um, so there's a lot of code there just to kind of set set all that up um, it's it also has another problem where you have to load the whole media file um, before you can actually play any music. Uh, so that's not great for mobiles, for example, which is a big part of this project. Uh, you really want to buffer stuff and start streaming it properly. You don't want to have to wait like five minutes. Um, so yeah, after seven minutes time, um, I started Googling again <coughs> and um, decided that, well, we looked into this audio element, and one of the guys had given us a uh, a tip into it that this thing actually does buffering automatically. Um, so this is much much more simple. It's uh, we just get the audio element that we would insert into the page, just do some quick type checking on if the audio can play a certain type. Um, OGG can be played by most browsers, but it can't be played by iOS, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so we just have to use MP3 for that. Um, you set the source and the type like that. Um, and then it's much more simple just to play, literally just say play, pause, pause. And seeking, you just set the current time equal to uh, per, um, certain seconds. Um, yeah, so that's not, uh, not to say the audio context still isn't useful, it, it is. Um, if you want to do like particular sampling, for example, of some audio, uh, or work on some gain. Um, this this is a good URL here to check out. If you, um, I was going to do some demos with Sam, but don't seem to have it. So, uh, but it's all there anyway. Um, yeah. So just in terms of lessons learned there, um, it's going to like using the audio elements to do any simple music streaming. Uh, don't use the audio context API if you have anything that's bigger than a couple of kilobytes or maybe a megabyte. And um, the Accordio Context API, you can do uh, to do more advanced things like customization of small sounds. So this, for example, would be useful for browser-based games. Um, 
Howler JS, as I mentioned earlier, was one of the libraries that I found, and it was using the Audio Context API for that. Um, yeah, that's uh, so that, that's kind of pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. Um, the MVP that we created is up on the on their website, gramify.com forward slash MVP. If you guys would like to check that out, and uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Zerto if uh, if you like to. And yeah, thanks for listening. Any questions? What about sound recording? Uh, recording sound? Mm -hmm. uh, from an input like... Microphone? Yeah, from microphone, yeah. Um, I'm not sure about that, to be honest. We didn't look into that. Uh, I'm sure there's some APIs for it, though. Um, so you, are you happy with the final product? Like, would you do anything different or, like, consider, with the, considering the problems you came up with and came up against? Um, yeah, so we, we kind of covered most of what we would change. Like, the biggest thing there was, like, for a long time we were using the wet audio context API and there was a big gap where we were loading the file in and that was very noticeable on the mobile. Um, so that was kind of a running sore for a couple of weeks. Um, so that was probably the biggest thing for me to that we were successfully changed into. Um, in general, like this is my first time as well, kind of doing working into uh, proper design. So it was my first foray into using stuff like SAS, for example. Um, so I'm sure a lot of that could be cleaned up, but in general, it looks pretty well, I think, at the moment. Um, some of the media queries don't go, don't don't perform particularly well on some resizing of screens, but. Uh, they're, they look pretty good on iPhone and iPad and so on. Um, so, yeah. Uh, first, about the uh, possibility to actually record, it's possible with the uh, Get User Media API, and after that we plug that through WebAudio API. But this wasn't my question. Uh, is that possible to play uh, the audio tag directly into the WebAudio API and thus to have the benefit of both? Uh, yes, actually it is. Uh, that's something we discovered at the end. So the audio context that, the audio context that we set up uh, back here, so where we set the buffer here, so is that buffer, um, we would instead change that to, I can't remember the exact property name, um, but we just changed the source to the HTML5 uh, audio element instead okay. of this, this buffer. So yeah, it's, it's possible. Excellent. Thanks. Um, I see that you can play in audio. What about the copyright and the rights management? How can you handle with that library? Um, of the music, the copyright of the music, you mean? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so first, that's not wasn't as much of an issue because we we're hunting this product off. This was an MVP that we did. Um, but they do have agreements, I think, with the London Symphony Orchestra, for example. Uh, they don't have copyrights for exactly everything yet, which is why uh, during the course of the project we did have to remove some music from the MVP. No, I mean, sorry, I mean, with this library, if I want to sell or distribute copyrighted content, how can I manage that? Is it possible? Is there a way to have a copyright management for audio content? Um, do you, so most of the JavaScript that we did was all vanilla, so that we didn't really use any libraries per se. Um, so like for copyright and audio, playing audio on, on, on browser, um, I don't think that's a problem. Um, it's just all built-in APIs that you would use. If that answers your question, I don't know. <laughs> I think he meant to some, if there's some sort of DRM that you can implement for like restricting or like uh, restricting copyright access, co like access to copyrighted materials or something like that. I think that's what he meant. Can you do that with the current implementation? 
Uh, no, don't think so. Okay, mm. cool. Anyone else? Oh, yeah. Is it possible to control the playback speed with the uh, the API that you used? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, it actually has a ton of options. Like you can change the gain. You can um, you can actually uh, crossfade sends as well. So if you had like th there's an example actually on that HTML5 rocks uh, link where. You can. They have a slider, and it's drums on one side and a sort of an organ on the other. And uh, as you drag the slider, it uh, makes adjustments so that it crossfades the two sounds together. Like that's one example. And yeah, there's a whole bunch of those kind of options. So that's definitely one. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thanks, John. Cheers.